Hey everyone, Andy Grenier here. Welcome to my garage. Hey, if you're like me and you have to share your garage with a few vehicles, then you're going to need some sort of work surface that you can quickly set up, quickly take down, doesn't take up much room when you store it in your shop, and most importantly, it has some functionality. It's not just a simple breakdown table or a sawhorse with some plywood on top. The best solution for these are the multifunction surfaces. Now there's many types and I'm going to show you through the next few videos several that you can choose from. But the, the key thing here is that they have 20 mil holes on a 96 millimeter grid pattern that's perfectly perpendicular and parallel to each other which provides a lot of functionality for the table. So which one should you make? What materials should you use? What tools are you going to need to make those 20 mil grid patterns? Well that's what we're here to find out. Now, the cheapest and simplest solution for a multifunction surface is to just get a piece of 3 quarter MDF and use it on top of a pair of sawhorses that you already own. I've got a pair of these aluminum sawhorses that I used when I was building my house and they work great. They're 36 inches high, perfect work height, and they're 3 feet wide which is perfect for this table which is about 3 by 4 and a half. Now I found these plans online through Rise Construction out of San Francisco. They have their multifunction slab that you see here. You can download a set of plans in CAD and you can take it to your local CNC shop. Now what I've done here is I've used my Shaper Origin to cut it out. Let's get into it. So here I have a 4x8 sheet of MDF. Now Rice Construction recommends a 1 inch sheet, but my local supplier doesn't carry 1 inch and I feel that 3 quarter will be just fine and is cheaper and lighter. Here I'm laying out the overall length and width as well as where each row of dog holes is going to be. The goal, as you'll see in a minute, is to locate the shaper tape in between the row of dog holes so that they're not cut up. Now Shaper Origin is the world's first handheld CNC. Everything you need fits in this single sustainer and unlike gantry style CNC, the user's arms move the cutter in the X and Y axes. So the tool has an auto correction mechanism that counteracts when the user moves the tool off the cut line. As long as you stay within a half inch tolerance plus or minus of the cut line. Now it doesn't really matter how straight you lay down the tape and your spacing doesn't have to be even but I'm taking extra care here with the spacing so I avoid putting tape right on top of a row of holes so it doesn't get cut up. Now Shaper Origin was a startup based in San Francisco and you can see how they have integrated a lot of compatibility with the Festool system. It has a 36 millimeter dust port which fits Festool hoses. The spindle motor uses the Festool MFK700 trim router motor. It even comes in a Tano sustainer that Festool uses. Here I am plugging it into my Festool CT26 dust extractor. Now this integration with the Festool ecosystem by Shaper paid off as they were bought out last year by Festool's parent company, TTS Tool Technic Systems, which is based in Wendlingen, Germany. Origin ships with a quarter inch collet, and here I'm using a solid carbide upcut spiral bit. Because Origin is compatible with Festool, I'm also able to use my 8mm collet from my Festool OF1010 router, which you'll see comes in handy later in the video when I cut the dog holes. Here I'm going to make a new scan of the Shaper tape field that I've laid out. The Shaper has fiducial markers. Each section has a unique set of dots that the Origin camera sees to track where it is in relation to the Shaper tape. Much like how a GPS works, it triangulates its position. Origin has a cool grid function which allows you to register the X and Y edges of a sheet of board you're cutting. Off camera I installed my engraving bit upside down so that I would get an accurate quarter inch pin to register with. You drop the pin below the surface and then press it up against the bottom edge of the MDF. You then probe a second point farther down the X axis and finally you only need to probe a single point along the side to register the Y axis which will be 90 degrees to the X axis. Origin then draws a grid of lines which are parallel to these axes. Next I import my multifunction slab design over Wi-Fi and select the bottom left anchor point to place this corner of the design at the zero zero or origin, no pun intended, of the XY grid. Now that I'm ready to cut, the general rule for all CNC's is that you set your cut depth for a single pass equal to the cutter diameter. In this case, I'm using a quarter inch or six mil cutter, so I have to set my depth to six millimeters. I'll need three passes to cut this three quarter inch sheet. 
I use a 0.2 millimeter offset for the first pass, which will be reduced to zero on the third and final cleanup pass. Finally, I set the cutter diameter to a quarter inch. Origin asks you to perform a Z-touch, which lets the tool know the distance from the cutter to the surface so it can get an accurate Z-axis measurement. It's a green button on the right side of the handle which plunges the router, and the screen shows the cutter's position relative to the stitched virtual image. Origin only lets you move in one direction, and you follow the cut line trying to keep the crosshairs on center. The circle delineates the correction range of the tool and as long as you stay within this range the cutter will follow the line accurately even if you waver a little bit. If you do go outside the range the tool automatically retracts. When plugged into the Festool vacuum Origin draws just enough power for the computer to operate but not enough current to trigger the auto feature. When I turn on Origin's spindle the current draw is sufficient to trigger the vacuum's auto start. Now that I've finished cutting all of the clamping slots I'm ready to cut the 20 millimeter dog holes. I special ordered a 10 millimeter upcut spiral bit that has an 8 millimeter shank. Here is when I'm going to switch to the 8 millimeter collet from my Festool 1010 router. This bit is the maximum size you can use to cut the 20 millimeter holes using Origin's helical function. The team at Shaper figured out that you get a perfectly round circle if the cutter spirals down in a helical pattern. It takes over two full rotations to make it all the way through the 3 quarter inch sheet. First I set the circle diameter of my holes to 20 millimeters. Because the helical function cuts the hole in a single plunging pass that is very accurate, I'm going to set the offset to zero. Now that I've changed the bit to the 10 millimeter cutter, Origin prompts me to take another Z-touch to recalibrate the Z-axis. I don't have to move the tool at all, I just place the crosshairs on the center and press the green button on the handle to start the auto helixing function. You have to hold the tool firmly as the spiraling bit wants to force the tool in the opposite direction. If you are picking up any tips while watching this video and like what you see, then please subscribe to my channel. If you ring the bell, YouTube will let you know when I post my next video. This is the first in a series of videos I'm making about different types of portable MFT style work surfaces. Also, let me know in the comments section below if you'd like me to make another detailed video about the Shaper Origin. Or if you have any questions, ask them in the comment section and I'll be sure to answer them. I'll also place some links to some of the various tools in the video description. I'm not sponsored and provide them for your benefit only. I customized my multifunction slab by adding my AG Wood Studio logo to the top. Origin can also be used for engraving. I simply imported my logo and set the cut depth. I went a little too deep at 4mm and would recommend 1.5mm or 1 16th of an inch. Now that I'm done, I can remove the shaper tape. If you look closely at the corners, I only cut a small length to mark each of the edges, and I'm going to cut the top out using my track saw. Well, looks like I made a common mistake cutting out the top. Let me know in the comments below if you can spot it. If you notice, the two sides have a rounded notch. One I cut to hold the 27mm Festool hose, and the other side holds the 36mm hose. Now I like to place a sheet of styrofoam under my sheet goods when using my track saw because it prevents cutting into the table below. Others recommend sacrificial strips and I tried those, but I find better dust collection when using a continuous layer of styrofoam. The only downside to this is you cannot use any other clamps in the interior of the table. You can only use clamps along the edges, but when cutting a full sheet of plywood or MDF, as in this case, it's so heavy, clamps aren't necessary. Now the plans for the multifunction slab have a narrow shelf to go between some plastic sawhorses that they recommend. Since my aluminum sawhorses are a little wider, I'm going to maximize the width of my shelf to fit between the steps on my aluminum sawhorses. This shelf is going to utilize the full 4 foot width of the offcut, and I'm laying out the location for the shaper tape. Since the shelf only has holes in the center, I don't need tape all over the whole surface. At $15 a roll, I try to make the most of my tape, as much as I can, which is also why I cut it with scissors rather than tearing it by hand, so I don't waste any of it. If you damage a part of one section of the tape, then that section can no longer be scanned by Origin. I already had the 10 mil cutter in the Origin from cutting out the dog holes on the worktop, so I decided to cut the holes first on the shelf. Origin is a really fun tool to operate. I've used a full-size CNC at my local makerspace, and Origin is much more engaging to use whereas the CNC I used was an industrial unit and needed to be programmed. It was a steep learning curve. For everyone except a high volume production shop, Shaper Origin is the better option. Now I've switched back to my quarter inch collet and spiral bit and I'm cutting out the grooves and carrying handles. The handles are in the same location as on the worktop, 
so you can carry them together. The long grooves are there so that the blade on a tool such as a jigsaw can protrude through and allow it to sit upright. The last thing I'm going to do before finishing the work surface is to put a small chamfer on all the edges and holes. Well, if you didn't catch it earlier, I, when I was cutting out the AG Wood Studio on the worktop, I had skipped the eye in Wood Studio and I fixed it on this shelf. MDF is really porous and will swell when wet, so it's important to really seal all the edges. Now I decided to use shellac to seal the worktop. It's my first time using shellac and I'm not so sure it's the best option. It was a little blotchy even after two coats. I've had better luck using Osmo, which is a hard wax oil. With Osmo, you can finish one side and flip it over almost immediately to finish the other side without getting any marks on the first side. I used a foam brush to get all the side edges and then switched to a rag and used my finger to get into each hole. It was a bit tedious, but I don't want to get any water into the MDF. I'm really happy with the final result. This portable worktop is really strong. It's got great clamping options in the dogs as well as the oval grooves around the edges and the hose slots are a nice touch. I've included a link if you want to purchase your own plans from Rise Construction. But just note, you'll have to modify them yourself if you want to use Origin rather than taking it to a CNC shop. If you enjoyed today's video or learned something for your workflow, then please click the like button down below. And if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to my channel. I'm just starting out and I could really use your help. Now, if you ring the bell, YouTube will notify you when I post a new video. Thanks for watching everybody, and I'll see you in the next one.